Welcome back to KGSM TV. I'm Jaden Miller. And I'm Zoe Jane. This week we covered several campus events, including a harvest party and Christian challenge. We also have our top news in history segment. And as always, Harry and Kanan will catch us up on Griffin Athletics. First, most colleges provide financial aid to students who qualify to help bring down the cost of their school balance. That is not unlike students here at Missouri Western. But for some students, the financial aid does not cover enough. Many students still end up taking out loans to help pay for the remainder of their tuition costs. A lot of students also work full-time jobs simultaneously just to help pay the bills for their education and cost of living. Oftentimes, that can take away from their social life at college. Here's what a few students had to say about it. I feel like me personally, that they need to have like different, I'm not gonna say rules and regulations for different people, but like certain people should get more. For instance, I am a first generation college student. So, you know, I feel like I should get a little more financial aid because it doesn't, I feel like it doesn't cover much. When I lived on campus, I had to pay at least $2,000 a semester out of pocket. So I moved off and now I just have to take out more loans in order to pay my remaining balance. Um, so since I've been here for four years, financial aid has been like with me all my four years of college. So it's been helped a lot, but it doesn't like take up as much as my tuition. So there's still much left over that I have to pay, but it's just kind of another thing to boost me up. I feel like it really does. Like I couldn't go out, like I was always working. After class, go to work, uh, no free time. Um, I feel like it helped like just a little bit because it also depends on like who, like who parent also files for your financial aid like who helps it out like who parents on your financial aid so i feel like if i didn't make as much or my mom didn't make as much maybe i would have got more in financial aid so it was kind of like just depends on your income so i wish it wasn't income based it was more trying to help the student um well i have an off-campus job and normally i'll take out a like a little loan to help me pay with some of it or i'll just use my paychecks and save up and then pay at the end of the month for more information on Missouri Western's financial aid program, you can visit the Financial Aid Office in Eater Hall, room 103. Alpha Gamma Delta held their annual harvest party on Sunday, November 13. Alumni and current members got the chance to reconnect with each other over some delicious food, beverages, and good company. There were many smiling faces in attendance. So the event tonight um, is for all members and all alumni of Alpha Gamma Delta. We come together and just celebrate being part of this wonderful organization with food and games and friends, obviously. I like to see it as like a big party where our past members and active members all come together and just have like a big potluck and play games and reconnect or meet new members that like we haven't met before. That looked like a really good time. To see more from Alpha Gamma Delta, you can follow them on Instagram at MWSU underscore Alpha Gam. Earlier this week, Missouri Western held an event on campus called Whose Idea Was This? Analysis to Understand Science Discourse, hosted by the Tri Beta Organization. There was a guest speaker at the event of whom was a Missouri Western alumni and former Tri Beta member. Dr. Brock Couch has come back to Missouri Western to share some important information with the students and members of Tri Beta about what he's learned in his career so far. So we have a, a guest speaker, Dr. Couch. He's a MWSC alumni and he also used to be a part of a Tri Beta, which is the organization that's hosting this event. And he recently got his PhD, so he's um, presenting like the research he did in grad school um, and then he's also going to like talk about some grad school to us for any students who are interested in going to grad school. Um, well, he reached out to us first, actually. Okay. He reached out saying that, you know, he'll be, he's interested in presenting to us. And for us, of course, like it's a great opportunity to have, you know, especially an alumnus to come over and tell us about his, you know, experience after graduating from here. So, um, I think one thing is it will, I think like just him presenting his research in general would be like very informative and interesting for a lot of people. Um, also, it kind of gives them an idea of like what goes on, you know, 
after like after graduating, you know, like different things you could do. And he was also going to tell us about, you know, his experience in grad school a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a, a degree in biology with a concentration in zoology. And then I also did a degree in wildlife conservation and management in 2015. Absolutely. So um, I got a lot of research experience um, and uh, specifically working with uh, amphibians, so frogs and salamanders. And so I went into uh, my master's kind of starting out with that. And I transitioned into finishing with like macro invertebrate stuff. Um, and while I was there, you know, I was thinking like, oh, is this the right thing for me? This is what I want to do, you know? One of those life choice decisions. And I thought, you know, I'm more interested in understanding um, how to get science out to people. Yeah, absolutely. So my research centers around understanding uh, science discourse. And so how I do that is something through network analysis. So we're familiar with social networks, right? We've seen little dots and connected by lines, you know, on Facebook. It's mm -hmm. not still a thing anymore. <laughs> I'm aging myself here. but. You know, it's something where um, really that gives us a view into how people are talking to each other and who's talking to each other. And so within a classroom, that becomes vital. For more information on upcoming events for Tri Beta's organization, you can follow them on Instagram at MWSU underscore Tri Beta. We'll be right back after this break. Jillian. Jillian. Breathe. Thanks. Jillian, how often do you relive this night? Constantly. He was my best friend and now I'm all alone. I understand how it can feel when you lose someone so important like that. I want you to think hard on this one for me. Do you have a support system? Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot this was today. I'll be out in just a second. Are you open to trying something a little more experimental? Tonight on Mr. Mummy's Horathon, killer dolls strike in Blood Buddy. Then there's no whisper within the woods. And finally, these kids are on thin ice with this goalie in Wednesday, the 27th. You won't want to miss out, for well, that would be a grave mistake. <laughs> it starts tonight at midnight on Channel 17. As we are halfway through November and beginning our Thanksgiving break, there have been a lot of important national news these past few weeks. On Monday, November 14th, three Virginia University students were fatally shot after attending a school play. The shooting took place on a bus as students were headed back to campus. The three students were members of the football team at the University of Virginia, and the shooter was said to be a former teammate. November 8, 2022, the state of Missouri voted to pass the legalization of marijuana for recreational use. The yes votes supported the passing of purchase legalization, consumption, delivery, and sale. The passing also allows individuals with certain marijuana-related offenses the petition for release of prison time or parole, and have their records expunged. The legalization will enact a 6% tax on the retail price of recreational marijuana. Break has just begun here at Missouri Western, and students have gone home to celebrate Thanksgiving with their friends and families. Thanksgiving was originally celebrated by the Pilgrims as a feast to connect them with the Wampanoag tribe. In 1789, George Washington issued the first Thanksgiving proclamation. In 1863, President Lincoln officially made Thanksgiving a national holiday. Lincoln named the date of this holiday to be on the last Thursday of November each year. To this day, we still gather with our friends and families on the last Thursday of November to celebrate what we are thankful for. To this day, we still gather with our friends and family on the last Thursday of November to celebrate what we are thankful for. Check back after the break for more stories. Missouri Western is home to the Walter Cronkite Memorial. 
The memorial is home to eight of his Emmys, as well as exhibits showcasing caricatures, space exploration, his wife Betsy Maxwell Cronkite, timelines of his career, and a replica of his CBS newsrooms that visitors can interact with. We invite all of you to explore the Cronkite Memorial. Self-guided tours are available Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Missouri Department of Conservation is located on Missouri Western's campus at 701 James McCarthy Drive. All you have to do is open the door and walk in. Once in, you will see all the sorts of animals, live animals, and rawr. Anyways, here's another snake. And a fish, so cute. Outside, you can see ponds, trees, and walking trails. There are even activities for kids. Stop by sometime between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Go Gris! Welcome back. The Cameron High School Drama Department wrapped up their fall production of Footloose the Musical last weekend. I got the chance to take an inside look at the final night of the show. Here's the story. The Cameron High School Drama Department performs a fall musical each year for all of the community to enjoy. Directors Missy Harper Stimberger and Andy Gibson Brown chose the classic 1998 Footloose. Footloose is the story of Ren McCormick, a teenage boy from Chicago, and his mother moving to the small town of Beaumont after his father abandons them. Upon their arrival, Ren is horrified to hear the town has outlawed dancing, and from there, the craziness ensues. The drama club began practices in August and continued to practice every day up until show night. Leads Matthew Meyer and Allison Brown say that finally performing for the community was well worth the hard work. Um, this year we've been through a lot, like as a cast together, and we've really grown together. And I think over the last three nights we've done like a lot of amazing things, and so it's kind of just crazy that it's over now. The musical was held on November 10th, 11th, and 12th, with the doors opening at 6 and show beginning at 7. Tickets were sold for $10 online. You could also purchase tickets the night of the show for $10 at the door. Before finding their seats, a few members of the community took advantage of the right to a cast member box set up outside of the theater doors. This table allowed for family member and friends to write a special note to a member of the cast, which were given to cast members to read after the show. After having the chance to mingle and use the restroom before the show, the production officially began with director Missy Harper introducing the kids and all of their hard work. I'm blown away. Blown away by how awesome they were. And this night, I think, was the best night because they were relaxed and they really hammed it up and added some cute stuff. The play was witty, funny, and of course, musical throughout the entire production. After the show ended, the directors took the time to recognize the cast's nine seniors with thoughtful and departing words, as well as special gifts for each senior to remember the cast's goodbye. There were a lot of memories made throughout the cast's time together, and even more tears shed after their final performance. But both actors and directors have just one piece of advice for those interested in joining the department. Just never stop trying. Always just put in as much effort as you can. And just try to develop your skill as best as you can because it's it's immense. You know, you're gonna you're always gonna get better. And you're always gonna see that, and it's gonna help you getting better roles. So just always try. So, but I would love to see our department grow and just have more kids and great big stages and productions and things like that. Um, I would say do it, especially if it's out of your comfort zone too. It's always nice to do something. Um, you know me, I didn't even know if I wanted to do this, but now that I did it, I'm so happy I did. Reporting for KGSM TV, I'm Jaden Miller. If you would like to see more from the department, you can find their community Facebook page at Cameron High Drama Department. Today we want to shed some light on one of many Missouri Western organizations. Christian Challenge is a Baptist-affiliated organization that meets across Mitchell Avenue at 6 p.m. on Thursdays. All members of the Missouri Western community are welcome to attend to enjoy the food and good hospitality. So we meet at 6, and then from 6 to 7, we have a free meal, um, pizza, and it's provided by local churches. And then after that, we usually um, start shifting into more of a worship setting. We do worship, and then our leader, Paul, um, does a sermon, and then we do probably one more worship song, and then hang out afterwards. Usually after, we'll play some form of ping pong. If it's warm enough, we'll go outside, play a volleyball game or something. We have sometimes different speakers come from other areas, too, not just Paul, um, for missions and different focuses and stuff like that it's a fun time really like I was nervous my first time and I brought a friend and stood by him the whole time and then after that you meet so many people and it's like a great opportunity to like make friends that you'll see later in classes 
So I, it's in general a fun time. It's good people, it's really welcoming. You walk in, everybody's like, "How are you doing? <laughs> What's your major?" <laughs> but, yeah. I feel like it was, I didn't know a lot of people in college, and so coming here was like a great way for me to meet new people in a safe environment. Yeah. It's a great time, and also like knowing that there's so many different people that I get to meet here, and it's not just the same, like they're a Christian to you, they're a non-Christian to you, they're, you know, everybody, it's, it's a good time. If you are interested in learning more, follow them on Facebook or Instagram at MWSU Challenge. In true KGSM fashion, our reporter Reese Payne asked students this week what their plans are for Thanksgiving break. Here's what he learned. All right, so we're here on campus today uh, checking out what people's Thanksgiving break plans are and going to see if they're going to buy things for Black Friday this year. Cool. Um, All right, so I'm here with Jamal. So uh, what are your plans over Thanksgiving break? Uh, I'm eating as much food, food as possible. Eat as much food, or are you a ham or a turkey kind of guy? I need it all. Eat it all. He's the whole table on Thanksgiving. <laughs> you got any uh, Black Friday shopping plans? Yeah, man. You know, Black Friday, you know, I get my Christmas shopping. Christmas, Christmas shopping. Uh, shopping. So I know what got going on. You heard the man here. Get it cheap. <laughs> Full of business attire. <laughs> all right, I'm here with Mason. Mason, uh, what are your Thanksgiving plans? Oh, no! Uh, I'm going to call it all the time with family and you gonna watch any football, play any games, oh, yeah. or uh, definitely play some things with football and watch some basketball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just have a big one. Great to hear it. Thank you, Mason. Yeah. Thank you. I'm here with Shelby. Shelby, uh, what are your plans for Thanksgiving break this year? Um, so for Thanksgiving, I plan on spending time with my 18 month old daughter, okay. um, and then I'm going to probably go eat lots and lots of food until I can't take it anymore with my family. Do you have any uh, Black Friday shopping plans? Oh dear. Um, yes, because luckily I have a babysitter. <laughs> so I plan on going as soon as the crack of dawn happens and going and knocking on my nose and stuff. Like that. Best way to do it. Thank you, Shelby. Yeah, no Thank problem. You. All right, I'm here with uh, Evan Williams. Evan, uh, what are your Thanksgiving plans for this year? Going back to Lindenwood University to see my girlfriend. Back to St. Louis at Lindenwood. What are you eating on? Are you a ham or a turkey kind of guy on Thanksgiving? Turkey for sure. Well, Evan, thank you. Coop, Coop, uh, what are your plans for Thanksgiving break this year? I'm chilling with my peoples, bro. Good time with them. What you eating on? You a ham or a turkey kind of guy? I'm turkey. Oh, um, ham, pork, ain't it? Yeah, I don't eat pork. Yeah, all right. You gonna you gonna rob the stores on uh, Black Friday deals? You gonna go out there and buy a bunch of stuff? I'm broke. I ain't gonna be buying nothing. Okay? I'll be playing that video game though. I'm with you. All right, thank you, Coop. All right, my boy. Nice All right, I'm here with Chloe. Uh, Chloe, what are your Thanksgiving break plans? Um, Thanksgiving break, I'll be at work majority. I'm trying to go out of town for the year, so I'm just gonna sacrifice my Thanksgiving to go out of town for the year. So. Make that money. Yeah. You gonna, uh, go Black Friday shopping at all? Probably online. I'm trying to buy a lot of stuff. So yeah, I just bought a new phone. So okay. I'm trying to go a little shopping. All right, thank you, Chloe. Thank you. It's all I'm here with Dr. Brett Bruner. Uh, what are your Thanksgiving break plans this year? I'm excited to host Thanksgiving for my family and bring them all to St. Joseph. Okay, nice. Are you a ham or a turkey kind of guy? I am definitely a ham person. Ham, okay. That's the first ham we've had today. Yes. Uh, and do you have any Black Friday shopping plans for a break? Um, I'm not usually a Black Friday shopper. Whatever is still out of like the Friday afternoon, that may be what I'm destined to find. Gotcha. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Reporting for KGSM TV, Reese Payne. Seems like Missouri Western can't wait to be on break. I know we're all excited for some relaxation next week. Harry and Kanan will have sports after the break. We'll be right back. Welcome to the eSports Arena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so you're just letting everyone in? Yeah. Looking for a place to hang out, game, or just relax? The Griffin eSports Arena is open to all students. Head on over today.
Welcome into KGSM Sports. I'm Kanan Bielwatz. And I'm Harry Loomis. It's been a news-filled week in the world of Missouri Western sports. Let's start off with football senior day game. Senior day for Griffin football, taking mm -hmm. on Lincoln. It's been a disappointing season for the team, but they can still salvage a win in the last game of the season. Take it to the first quarter. You're going to be hearing a lot about this guy. Titus McCoy breaks off a run to the right side. He's going to get about 60 on this play before taken down just before the 20. Later on the drive, he'll finish it off himself. Stutter steps, rolls to the right, and tucks it in for seven. Griffins take the lead. Second quarter now. Reagan Jones is going to keep this one himself. Fakes everyone out, including the cameraman. Stiff arms a guy, and he is out of there. Touchdown, Griffins. What a play by the quarterback. And the Griffins will go up 14, fourth quarter now. It was a Titus McCoy show. This is his fifth touchdown of the day. 298 yards, and he's going to count it up. One, two, three, four, five. An incredible send-off for the senior as the Griffins would close out the 2022 season with a 41 to nothing win. To be honest, it's all the O-line. They make the holes, I just make the right cut, and today worked in my favor, the O-line. It's easy running through a line if you're not getting touched. So. We always know, you know, he's been here for a long time. He's battled. The cool thing about it is that the, the kid never quits. He just he just keeps battling and battling. He's had so many just negative things that's happened. He's had a, quite a few injuries here and there that's just kind of kept him back from being able to push for that starting role and to get in there and play a bunch. Reporting for KGSM TV, I'm Harry Loomis. One day after the win, the school announced that head coach Matt Williamson will not return to the program next year. Through six seasons as head coach, the former Griffin compiled a 31-26 and record, highlighted by back-to-back -back wins in the Live United Bowl in 2018 and 2019. Missouri Western Director of Athletics Andrew Carter released a statement to GoGriffins.com that said this, After careful evaluation, we have determined that a new direction was needed to help secure the future success of the program. We appreciate the service, commitment, and dedication that Matt, his family, and coaching staff have given to Missouri Western. A national search for the team's new head coach is underway. Men's basketball started off their season with a big win in the Hilliard Classic, defeating Minnesota Crookston in 81-76 in overtime. The question is, though, could they make it two in a row? Day two of the Hilliard Sipoff Classic, Missouri Western looking to defend home court and move to 2-0 of the year against Norton State. First play of the game, Will Eames to Tay Fields. Eames sets the screen, Fields knocks down that shot, nothing but net. Fields will finish the game with 19 points, a team high. Four Griffins will finish the game in double digits for scoring. Julius Dixon, pump fake over the defender, nice little floater, nothing but buckets. That would inspire Will Eames to get involved with the scoring as well. Catches the ball, takes a dribble, pull up over defender, nothing but net. This was a back and forth game the entire time. Had the crowd extremely nervous. Mid first half, Griffin's trying to find something, trying to move the ball around. Julius Dixon drives baseline, finds Zion Swader wide open for three. He hits that. Missouri Weston takes the lead going into halftime. But second half, all Norton State. Norton State trying to get something going, but Josh Dillon wide open. He hits that three. Missouri Weston looking for an energy source, and they find it off a of Julius Dixon fast break slam. Missouri Weston down by six, three minutes left to play. But the Wolves would come alive. Sam Mastin right here. Switches off a of Zion Swayer. Gets J.C. Anthony in an uncomfortable situation. Knocks down that three. Mastin would finish the game with 24 points. Missouri Western takes a timeout. Falls the Northern State 68-57. to Head coach Will Martin would talk about why he thought his team would go on to lose this game. We had 17 turnovers. And I was starting in there. It just can't happen. And we've worked really hard in the preseason, and we've done a really good job in practice and against other opponents taking care of the basketball. I thought that we didn't play our best game against Crookston yesterday, and we, we blew a 15-point lead, but we only had nine turnovers, including overtime. So you leave that game, and you watch the film, and you want to you wanna get better on the offensive and defensive end. But the fact that you took care of the ball something that we've emphasized. You, you put yourself in a position to succeed. With 17 turnovers, we're not going to beat anybody. Since taking on Northern State, Missouri Western dropped another game against Oklahoma Baptist. Despite being up 39-33 going into halftime, the Griffins were outscored in the second half 43-28. Reese Glover led Missouri Western in scoring with 18 points going 6-for-11 beyond the arc. Coming into this week, Missouri Western women's basketball hadn't tipped off at Looney since February 19th. At that point in time, no one could have predicted the historic pro season run the Griffins would have enjoyed. Now, nine months later, 
Most of that Central Regional Championship team is still here, and the team's expectations and standard are that much higher. Home opener for Griffin women's basketball taking on Truman, and it was a historic night honoring last year's Elite Eight squad. Let's take it to the first quarter. Gracie Stugar with a nice overhead pass to Hannah Bellinger. Corner three is good, and the Truman Bulldogs would go up early. Later on, you're not seeing double. Stugart, again, finds Bellinger at the exact same spot, exact same result. She had 25 points on the day, but later on, Griffins would get going. Alyssa Bonilla in the corner is going to find Brianna Budgets. Three-pointer is good. Get used to hearing that, ladies and gentlemen. Later on now, Budgets finds Mary Fultz at the top of the key. Her long two is good. Really fast pace to this game early on in the first quarter. Second quarter now, Caden Cobb at the corner fakes the shot. Budgets fakes the shot as well to the rim. Just silky smooth from the junior. Later on, look at this pass. Alyssa Benia, no look to Mary Fultz. Counted and a foul. Fultz had a great game in this one. Now get used to me saying this name, Johnny Gonzalez. That's why. Pulls up the three. Just another wrinkle to this explosive offense. She's going to go to the right side here. She's looking to make an impact just like Abby Bala. Bang, three-pointer is good, and the Griffs are buzzing in this one. Now Griffs on defense. Connie Clark undersized, but it doesn't matter. She's going to get the steal and in transition. Lays it up and in. She had 12 points in this one, but the star of the game was Brianna Budgets. To the rim, slicing and dicing. 26 points on the day for Budgets, and what a way to start off the home slate for Griffin women's basketball. Ring that bell. Griffins win it 81-72. to What a fun night at Looney. And that's all for sports. We'll wrap up the show after this. A leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. Give me a student with a plan in their head, or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? But instead, they come to me in a panic when they need to what register because- I need to talk to you. I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pin and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take. So I just signed up for a bunch of random ones and I'm gonna drop them later. So can I have my pin real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. With only two shows left for KGSM TV this semester, we would like to invite anyone interested in anchoring to auditions. If you are looking for your shot to anchor on camera, you must enroll in the Griffin Media JLU 311 course. To sign up for anchor auditions, email our show director, Maddie Spath, at mspath at missouriwestern.edu. Auditions will be held on December 2nd and 9th in the Hearns IMC studio, located across from the library. There is no preparation required, and a script will be provided for you to read on camera. The 2021-2022 yearbook is in. Ariane Foma's theme is Rising from the Ashes, where we reflect on a year transitioning out of the pandemic. Pick up your yearbook in Eater 222 between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. If you haven't purchased your copy, scan the QR code on the screen to secure yours. Orders for the 2022-2023 yearbook are also open. Editor-in-Chief Hannah Owens' theme is Perspectives. Her goal is to show Missouri Western's diversity. To order yours, scan the QR code now. Coming up on KGSN TV, we will be providing more in-depth stories regarding the legalization of recreational marijuana in Missouri and discussing preparation for finals. And Kanana and I will be filling you in on the world of Griffin basketball. To keep up with everything in Missouri Western news, follow us on Facebook and YouTube at KGSM TV. We will see you next time and have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone.